Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another episode of checking out one of your guys' solar systems. So today we've got one system from the user Kerbal in Discord, so a massive thank you to them for sending in their system. But without further ado, let's hop straight into this. So it's on the subscribed. Uh, where are we? There it is, Ticeti. So I know this one had to be done in an older version, so I've swapped an older version for this one as I already previously opened it and saw uh, it said that. Update 34 might break it, so I went straight into an older version as soon as I saw that. But anyways, this is my custom version of the Ticeti system, a part of a larger solar neighbourhood simulation where I added plenty of my own fictional stuff. I guess you can uh, look around the system without zooming as you can read the uh, relatively long description intro. Right, okay, hello. Right, what have we got? Okay, so we're tilted on its side as well with the camera. Okay, so Ticeti itself is about the same as in real life, noticeably smaller than our sun and only half as luminous. It's the closest solitary G-type star in the same spectral class as our sun, but somewhat cooler, making it a G8 V star. It's solely, or it rotates solely and it's not very active. You might have noticed that um, it also has a new name, Utu Smashu. Okay, right. This version of the Ticeti system has names referring to Meso, um, Mesopotamian mythology with the in-universe reason that an accident in the system was deemed by the internet to be apparently similar to the creation myth Enuma Elysia. I, I have to say, I don't know what that is. Um, Utu Samash refers to the two names used for the Meso God of the Sun. Okay, Mesopotamian God of the Sun, also referred as the God of Truth, Justice and Morality. Okay. So, the system has 11, 13 uh, planets depending on if you count the binaries, including 4 confirmed, 4 unconfirmed. Two predicted ones are a sort of binary planet and two through fictional ones. Additionally, the system has a bunch of fictional moons and dwarf planets. While not including the simulation, the system has a thick debris disk light in real life, causing most planets to have a lot of craters. This description is a shortened version. You can see the full one here, optional on Google. Um, yeah, he said in his upload in the Discord about that as well, but he said it's fine if we don't, so we'll, uh, we'll just go straight on to the uh, basic descriptions. We don't want to be reading too much. So, right. First object. We've got Nabu over here. Hello. So... A small and dark, hot fictional planet that orbits um, the star in a little over a week. Despite being close to the star, it rotates quite quickly, possibly due to a collision right in, in the right direction. Okay. Next planet out, we've got Marduk. A hot super Earth and a somewhat dark surface, which is also glowing hot. Its rotation is a free uh, two reconnaissance with the orbit, just like Mercury. Despite it being close to the star, it has one moon, which also has a Mercury-like rotation. Okay, and there is the moon there. Looking good. Okay, next up we've got Gula. Over here. A planet, or a hot planet larger than Earth. It's a moderate atmosphere and its surface covered in rifts and mountains alongside craters, showing that it's somewhat geologically active. It also has some glowing hot spots, which you can see on the surface, especially from behind. Okay, cool. Okay, next up we got Nin Ninhasag over here. Cool, so another crater world. A toasty super Earth and the largest planet inside um, Ashtar's orbit. It has a very high axle tilt of 48.5. Cool. Next up we got uh, Gibil. Another toasty super Earth. This one has a greyish surface with active geology and volcanism. It also has an atmosphere. Some of the volcanoes are large enough to be seen as glowing spots. The craters you might see will be similar to Luna Maria. Uh, its orbit is rather eccentric and crosses in her sargs. Okay. Nice. Right. Um, next up we've got Ishtar. <laughs> this one's like a more cloudy looking one. Okay. A toasty Venus-like super Earth with two moons. It is one of the largest objects in the system. It's very thick out, so it has a significant amount of argon, which in combination um, with electric stuff causes it to have a pale purple tint. It's also somewhat active geologically like Venus. Some water also managed to avoid fully boiled away, creating several lakes. Warning, unpause will cause the planet to be flooded with water. It seems to be somewhat uninteresting moon, or to the moon of it, which is there. Uh, seems to be rather uh, uninteresting. Well, it is a bit more interesting. Uh, the other one's a bit more interesting. 42% more massive than the first moon, but a bit smaller and has a surface of contrasting colours. That's the second moon here, isn't it? Yeah. 
There we go. Cool, but anyways, the planet itself, I want to see underneath this surface. Let's have a look. So there it is, okay. Nice. Cool. There you go. Okay, next up we've got Tiamat. Tiamat over here. Got a ring system as well, very nice. Okay, it's got one moon as well. Okay, so... Uh, a super earth with a very thick layer of water and extensive ring system. Its atmosphere is quite thick and consists mainly of water vapour. Colour it in an earth-like pale blue with white clouds. The abysmal cooker of a panthalassic ocean still managed to develop life. This planet has many large colonies of unicellular organisms. This is also the place of the incident mentioned in the intro. Its largest moon, Kingu, could have geologic activity but is otherwise simple. Okay. Then, yeah, the planet itself. Have a little look underneath as well. There you go. Hmm. Looking good. Nice. So we've got um, Ashnan over here. Oh, they're very big. Okay, right. So these two, Ashnan and Lahar, a binary of two small rocky planets, both had to roughly based on theoretical exoplanets PXP4 and PXP5, both for smaller than Earth. Um, Ashnan by a fifth and Lahar comparable to Mars. Great proximity of Ashnan and Lahar likely caused them to experience colossal tidal effects, but it might be migrated by being tidally locked. Um, both have life, with uh, Ashnan having green vegetation, but it's likely suffer major extinctions from tidal volcanism and occasional impacts. Yeah, we get some pretty crazy tidal forces with these guys being that close to each other. I mean, that's uh, that's pretty wild. Okay, cool. So next up, we got. Inlil over here. Next object out. Gas giant. First of the gas giants. Okay. Ooh. So, a small yet colourful gas planet. While very small for a gas planet, it is the second largest in size and mass planet in the system. It is located a bit further than in real life. Okay, so this is based off a real object then. Okay. Cool. So it's got moons. So, uh, Nitara is an icy and comparable to our moon size. It also has a somewhat colourful surface. Then we're going to Nana over here. Um, it's the largest moon in the system and likely has active ice geology. Plus, it could be visible from uh, Ashton. Um, it is small and icy, but is likely somewhat active geologically and slowly erodes craters. Okay. Next up, we've got Enki, which is where are we all? There we go. Cool. The smallest independent planet in the system. Its fiction has over 40% um, of the mass's ices. Majority of the surface is clean, white, or bluish, but lowlands are red from organic compounds instead. It has a small but visible ring formed by fragments of an asteroid moon. It has a small ice moon, possibly had geologically activity in the past, which is down here. Okie dokie, looking good. Okay. Oh. Right. Um, next up, we've got Anu. This looks to be another gas giant, judging by the amount of writing there's about it. Okay, yeah. The largest and most massive planet in the system, and by a wide margin, comparable to Jupiter in size and much more massive. Being the outermost planet, Anu is the most responsible for keeping the thick outer belt in check. It might not be too effective at preventing impacts, but it keeps many objects in orbital uh, resonance. Anu also has a wide uh, gas planet as one of its moons, making it a binary in a way. Very centre still inside Anu though. Okay, centre of gravity. So, Anu's moons. So, next up we've got um, Ishkar. A massive rocky and Io-like, but has an atmosphere thicker than Titans. An Io and a Titan combined. That's an interesting combo. Okay. Uh, next up we've got Baal. Baal and Nishina are fairly similar. With icy cells and geologic activity are visible by cracks um, on the surface. While they're both less massive than the Ishkar, they are larger due to lower density. Then next up we've got Urash. Over here. Uh, Notes to be smaller and has much more ice in composition, making it almost the size of me while having only half of the mass. Uh, and then we have Amaru, small and low density over here. Captured object due to its inclined orbit. Nice. And there's one more over here, Kai Ki. It's a blue one. The ice giant gas dwarf orbiting Anu. It would be the third largest planet in the system if it was orbiting the star, although um, time at is more massive. Kai didn't form any cloud or many clouds and is blue as a result, although some clouds are present. 
Submoons, Kishar, and Anshar. Uh, where I uh, are quite small and very similar in size, but have different masses and compositions. Antu is a bit larger and has a rugged surface. The submoons are all geologically uh, inactive. There they are there. Okay. So now moving on from that, so I guess in the rest of all dwarf planets, the debris of this system is much more dense than that of ours and is populated by many objects such as dwarf planets. Most interesting objects in this region would be the large duo of Eresh Kigal, which is here, and Nurgle. Okay, okay, All right, there you go. Um, which seems to be similar to the moon Mushasu in the inner system. The ellipsoidal Imashara and Anshar with its moon. Okay, right, cool. So we'll go ahead and check out the rest of the objects on our own now. So there they are. Some of these moons, Gugalana. Some very interesting names in there. And yeah, you've lost me with the names, I have to say. <laughs> right. We're going to need a book to pronounce all these. Right, so there we go. We'll try and uh, navigate from all as well. Nina Zoo. I mean, I can say that one. So over here. Looking good. Nurgle. That one's pretty dark. Over here. Just a lot of rocky, very heavy rocky orientated system in here. Very, very rocky. So, there we go. We've got Nungle. Oh, what I'll do is I'll open them up and we can go through them all faster. So, there they all are. There. They're, all, they're all frozen, icy, rocky worlds. All of these guys. So, there they are. Okay. I think that's the majority of them. Over here. There. Yeah, alright. Okay, that seems to be everyone. Cool, and that is everything. Okay, cool. So again, a massive thank you to uh, Kerbal for sending this system. Quite an interesting one there. Very, very rocky orientated. I mean, if we just get a line up here, they're all quite similar in appearance. A lot of these guys, as we can see here. So, all uh, rocks, the greys and browns. Lots of greys and browns in this system, as we can see here. So there we are. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to press that like button down below. Let's see if we can go for 200 likes on today's video. And also subscribe for more help on the journey to 40,000 subscribers. And again, a massive thank you to Kerbal for sending in their system. Very nice indeed. And if that all said and done, guys, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.